the satellites are the size of a of a Coke can, and we call them CanSats. The reason for the whole program is uh, is education, and it's not to build a satellite or do any of that. It's to get through the process. We're interested in students finding out what it's like to say, well, I'm going to build a, a CanSat or some sort of device. What am I going to make it do? How do I do all the trade-offs for the things that I'm going to put in it? I want to you know, I want to radio in it that transmits data back down. I may want a receiver in it so somebody on the ground can command it. Um, I also will have some sort of sensor in it that people, uh, that I can measure something. It could be temperature, it could be acceleration, and uh, uh, the, the whole purpose is to pick a payload, uh, build it up, do some testing on it, bring it out here to BlackRock, and go through the process of getting it in these rockets and flying it and they go up to 12,000 feet and, and kick these out and the students communicate with them while they come down it takes about 15 or 20 minutes to come down and it's very similar to a, to a real rocket launch to put something into orbit around the earth. It has real-time video and so we've actually got a VCR with our imaging ground station and we'll be taping it and also there's a thermistor inside and it'll record the interior temperature, just a health indication. Um, a CANSAT was built to transmit uh, temperature data back down to the ground station. Um, it just has a uh, transmitter with a little circuit that's built on the side of, that, uh, that basically sends a bunch of tones to uh, the radio. A count of five, four, three, two, one. The Rocketeers that are that are here, they're they're very very professional in the way they do things here. It's doing this hobby f with a with a real purpose. I mean, it's not just about smoke and fire and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we're we're helping an educational process here and a able to do science ourselves, or at least help support science. It's awesome. It's it's great learning experience for us as well as the students. To be able to be part of a program like that is just incredible. I would have loved to have done something like this in school. Uh, science was not this, uh, I wasn't this lucky in science uh, class and to some of these schools are actual middle schools and high schools who, who have phenomenal uh, uh, science projects. It gives us uh, more of a purpose in doing this than uh, just watching them and watching them come back. So we actually get to, to help somebody do something with a career. Okay, we got six pieces hanging together, so it looks like we've got a great flight. Congratulations. How did it work for you? It worked good. Uh, it was up in the air for about seven minutes or so, and I was able to uh, capture some, some temperature data. Um, it worked great. Uh, didn't have any damage on landing. Well, I think over the three years of the program, we've seen an increasing level of sophistication in the projects that these uh, students are bringing out now. And they've taken each year's experience and built upon the previous. These guys, especially the Japanese students, they've never come to a place like this ever. I mean, it's, for them, the first year that we did this, you know, it was like them going to the moon. I mean, it's so barren and, and opposed to what they see in Japan. The thing of it is, is there's no black rock desert in Japan and this is kind of unique for, for everybody to come out here. So there's also this mystique of black rock and coming out and seeing things. So that's a venture in itself. Building a small satellite is a very uh, good educational opportunity for uh, university students. Uh, in Japan, it is uh, very difficult to launch a uh, uh, rocket until a very high altitude because of the roll. So uh, we are very happy that uh, we can do that in the United States. Also, we have a, a unique group here this year. We have a group from uh, Lockheed Martin in Sunnyvale. They're in a program that I'm involved with at Stanford uh, to learn how to build satellites. And this is their first time building a CANSAT and coming here and launching it. So they're getting experience, even though they're professional satellite engineers, they never get to see the big picture. And so part of the, the reason for taking the program at Stanford is to get to see the big picture because you might have one that says, well, I only design control systems are on satellites and they know nothing about the propulsion or nothing about the communications. So in the class that we have, they do all of theirs and their first exercise is a can set. How are you feeling right now? <laughs> I'm so nervous. This is so cool. I mean, I'm getting an image and we're about to go. This is just, yeah. wow. We're very excited about this. We'd like to um, fly as many times as we can. Better snow. Better snow. Better. We didn't get image data of the ground, 
but we got not snow, which meant the camera was working when it was inside the rocket on the way up, which is good. And we just lost it. I mean, I can't even, <laughs> I can't even trace it with my eyes. So for us to try to trace it with a dish, I guess it's, it's hard. And even though the video didn't work perfect, we had the general direction of where all the, the cans have landed. They landed almost in a straight line. Uh, the first one was 3.6 miles out. The farthest away was 5.62 miles out. It's a little beat. You actually up. used, I mean, a Pepsi, how's it, you got, so you got it back. That's. Uh, this is twice now I've managed to get it back. I thought I lost it twice now, so I'm, I'm pretty pleased that I've gotten it back both times. So. And it's, and it's operated certainly the first time. It seems like it's operated this time. We'll have to dump the memory and see what it's stored. A failure here is not an educational failure. A failure here is a learning mode. So, you know, we nobody's punished. They're always a little disappointment if they don't work perfectly. But that's the whole thing is every satellite that you fly doesn't work perfectly. And it's better to do it here and cheaper here and to learn the lessons and before you put it into space. Um, it's a lot of fun, you know, gathering data. Um, I would love to pursue it in the future and go ahead and uh, do aerospace uh, engineering, possibly. Um, but let's kind of see where it goes from here. Look at this group here. This is the generation that pretty soon is going to be doing this, and you rocket guys here have helped train this generation, so I'd like to give you a hand. But I have to admit that we did not fly CANSATs in all of them because one of them, Pius Flewey's data logger, and the other, I flew my satellite. This is called Aquafina Satellite. And we flew this because we needed some ballast. But I want to tell you about the performance of this satellite. It operated exactly as planned. The data was dirt cheap. Okay, so that's my Aquafina Satellite. So if you don't think I built satellites, I really do. This is a structure, picture of the structures. And this is uh, second layer servo systems. And this is a onboard computer system. There's servo motor on second layer, and this is a paraglider canopy we made, and this is all made handmade by ourselves. So we we will have to find out the reason why it didn't open. So where do you want to go from here? You know, we've really made some accomplishments over this last year from when we started three years ago. So I have a proposal here. Get your CANSATs ready. Let's go to the moon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Want to do a lunar flyby? Okay, get them ready. You rocket guys, hey, a little bit bigger. 